Hi and welcome. This demonstration is more of a demonstration than a project, although there is a little project where I make the round part to test, or evaluate rather, uh, but it's mostly a demonstration of simple geometry. Most of you are probably aware of this, but if not, it might help you a little bit, and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I'm putting the uh, drawings up front and discussing them first in case you want to skip all the physical demonstration, which takes a little bit longer in the making of the part. So let's uh, jump right to it. So the first step is you need to have a well-trammed vise. Uh, you need to have a vise with jaws that are square and parallel. And uh, you have to have a part that's round. If you don't know if it's round, this might not work very well. But if, it's, if all these things are true, then clamp your part in the vise. Make sure that the that the edges of it are parallel to the jaw faces and that the uh, that it's perpendicular to the bottom of the vise. Step one, you use your edge finding tool and find the inside edge points of the vise jaws. And this will tell you the two extremes of your y-axis. Halfway between those points is the midline or the center point, center line of your part. Once you know the center line of your part, you can follow that center line to the edge of the part along the x-axis and find both x-axis extremes. Once you know those, you divide that distance by two, and now you have both the center of the y-axis between the jaws, the center of the x-axis between the edges of the part at its extreme edges, and now you have the center point for the entire part. Um, I need to point out that it's absolutely essential that the vise be trammed because if it's not, then the x-axis, when you find the center point between the two jaws, I'm sorry, along the y-axis, that x-axis will not be along the center line of the part, as you will see in this drawing. Uh, so once you've got all that above, now you can find the center line of the part if you don't have a coaxial center finder, uh, if you want better accuracy than just dropping a point, if you happen to have the center marked on the part already, you know, dropping a point in your quill to line up, because that's not terribly accurate. Um, anyways, hopefully this was helpful, and if you're interested, uh, keep watching, and I'll show you making the part and demonstrate it physically. All right, thanks. Oh, I almost forgot. I also wanted to point out the drawings are available for download if you just want them for reference, or you're interested, or you just like downloading stuff. All right, let's move on. Today's quick project is going to be demonstrate a way to center a part on the mill in the mill vise. Why am I on the lathe, you wonder? Well, because I am going to attempt to create a piece that I can trust is relatively round for this example because it is required. Um, <clears throat> as you will see shortly, um, I'm going to create the, I'm going to face the, uh, f the back of it first so I've got a flat datum side. I am going to turn the outside edge so I have a round part that I can clamp in the vise and then I'm going to face the front and I'm going to put a groove in the front where I can indicate off of uh, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> oh, it's a little tapered on the outside edge. <laughs> I will fix that. Okay, now we can turn it around and bore it. Oh wait, no, no, no. 
didn't quite get it all. It was definitely not round and take off a little bit more there apparently. So you might be wondering at this point, why didn't I use a four jaw chuck, uh, you know, indicate the part in on the other side. And that's because the final dimensions of this part really don't matter. I'm just trying to make something that's parallel uh, and round. So I'm using the side I just cut as the reference surface and I'm going to make this side round relative to that side and that's what's important. If actual dimensions were important, then I'd have to be a lot more careful than I am. so I can indicate off of it if I choose. There's a little band to differentiate the two parts. Let's see if I got it enough. Looks like I didn't, I think. Nope. Okay. A little more. scratching my beautiful surface. So for this project, they actually used an insert designed for aluminum. So it has a uh, positive rake instead of a typical negative rake like uh, steel cutting bits often have. And this, this uh, insert holder actually has a negative rake, but it's compensated for by the positive rake of the insert. It also has a coating on it that reduces the likelihood of aluminum welding. But it doesn't prevent it completely, so I was checking to make sure that there wasn't any buildup of aluminum on the edge. Uh, because if there is, then it's going to hurt the finish. But I was pretty sure that the finish was being damaged by the, ch the long stringy chips themselves being dragged across its surface. You also see me here using my hands pulling chips out of the way. Probably not the best idea. In this case, I felt pretty comfortable that uh, I wasn't in danger, but just as a general behavior, 
probably should keep your hands away from the moving parts. Use a pair of pliers or a chip remover. Mark the center. So I'm using the lathe live center to uh, just put a mark in the aluminum. Uh, it's carbide tipped. Uh, if it had been steel, I wouldn't okay. do this. I wouldn't want to risk damaging my center. center. Carbide is brittle. Um, but for aluminum, it worked fine, and I wasn't putting a ton of pressure. So I don't have any inserts designed specifically for notching a face like this. I had a couple that might have worked, but I was trying this one. So I set the cutter perpendicular to the axis, or parallel to the axis of the lathe, sorry, not perpendicular, and perpendicular to the surface I was going to cut. And uh, this is my first attempt ever at uh, cutting a groove like this. So I knew that one side is going to have a slope where the uh, triangle is at its 60 degree angle. But that doesn't matter because I only care about this outside edge being perpendicular to the surface and parallel to the axis of the part. You'll see me indicate on it later. So you'll notice I'm producing a lot of long stringy chips, whether I take a big bite, small bite, this is a pretty big bite, well, relatively speaking, and it's because I'm not getting the feeds and speeds right. Um, if you do, the chip breaker on the part's supposed to break the chips up into little pieces so that you get these long stringy messes. Um, more experimentation is needed on my side, uh, maybe looking at the manufacturer's website to see if I can get more insight. With aluminum, I have a particular problem. I've never gotten to make good chips on aluminum. Steel seems to be easier. Anyways, just something to note. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the chip breakers are those little bumps just inside the edge. So when you're cutting metal, normally the metal curls up and the chip breaker is supposed to push the chip over enough to cause it to break. Aluminum's pretty flexible, so maybe higher feed rate would do the job, but in any case, like I was saying, more experimentation or some more insight from the manufacturer. As I'm doing this, I have no particular depth I'm looking for, just deep enough that when I demonstrate the coaxial indicator, I have enough material to actually run the little probe on. That's it. So, again, this whole part is simply demonstrate the various methods to find center, and I really wasn't going for any specific dimensions, didn't make a drawing for it, just winging it. So we have a part where 
With the center, we have a concentric inside surface. We have a concentric outside surface. And uh, I've got to deburr them real quick, but uh, after that, we should be good to go and go measure and try and find the center of this part. Finding the center. So, first and simplest but probably least accurate way is if you have a center point like I do here, you can adjust your x, y axes with a point and line it up like that. Find zero. That'll get you within a few thousands, maybe ten thousand, something like that, plus or minus. Uh, next method would be to use the coaxial indicator, which we will set up and uh, give it a shot. So you can use a coaxial indicator on the outside if you know that it's round. This coaxial indicator reads in half a thousandths per division. You can even use a coaxial indicator with the center finder. Or we can measure the inside track I put on this with the coaxial indicator, get it to within half a thousandth of what we think center is. Finally is the solution that I want to show you. So if this were the spinning kind of edge finder and you tried to find the edges. Now you'd have a problem, although part of this method would work, because the first step, since we sort of guaranteed this part is round by turning it on the lathe very carefully, then the jaws are tangent to the extreme opposite sides of one of the axes of this part, namely the y-axis on the mill. Um, however, with the spinning one, touching off the edges trying to find the edge might be difficult except for one thing which I'll explain in a moment. So let's take a look. So so with this kind of edge finder it's electronic so it's just looking for measured conductance let me turn off this light to make it easier for you to see. So we're looking for measured conductance. So there is one side of the part in the y-axis. And there is the other side of the part. So once we know that, we can calculate the zero in the y-axis. So let me set this for y0. Then, since we know y0, that means we are on the x-axis exactly, which means if we find the edge points, um, if we find the edge points of the part with y0, that will give us our x values. So there's one side, and the spinning one might even work on this, even though it's a round surface, because we're trying to catch the exact stream, extreme uh, where the tangent would meet. So there would be one. And there we go. We have the other axes. Thus, we can find the center point, boom, problem solved. Another way to do it, if it's a round part, and you can trust that you are clamped on the extreme sides, and there you go.